Guys, welcome to my FIFA 19 Premier League career mode. This is episode one, and I always like to do a Premier League career mode. I think that the Premier League is probably the league that FIFA put the most concentration into, the most effort in terms of player likenesses, player ratings, overalls, uh, face scans, even the stadiums, all 20 stadiums are fully licensed. So I think that if you want to have the ultimate experience playing FIFA, you probably get that more out of the Premiership. But it could also be that, you know, we're biased, we live in the UK, and uh, yeah, that might be the reason why. So when it came to selecting my Premier League team, there was a few teams that I put up in the poll. Uh, there was Man United, Arsenal, Everton, uh, Leicester, Fulham and Newcastle. I would have been happy to have went any of those teams. But the team, obviously, as you can tell by the thumbnail, the title of the video and the fact that we're stuck bang on Leicester here. The team that got selected with the most votes is Leicester City. Now, Leicester City a few years ago did the unthinkable. They did what people said was a miracle, what people said was a fluke. They managed to win the Premier League title. Since then, people have said Leicester will never be back there. Well, I want to prove them wrong. I want to take Leicester back to the top of the league. I'll be back. Myself and hopefully you guys watching this series, that is what we can do. So let's have a quick look here at Leicester. Leicester City formed as Leicester for... I wasn't aware of that. I thought they were always Leicester City, but that's a good thing about uh, FIFA. You learn information. Most of it's probably irrelevant that you'll never need to know, but uh, they were formed in a garden shed. Holy shit. Uh, they have lifted the Champions League trophy one time. No, not the champ. Uh, they've lifted the Champions Trophy one time. Uh, Leicester City provided one of the biggest shocks in English football history when they won the Premier League in the 2015-16 season, which we were talking about. Uh, transfer budget is 48.3 million, club worth 861.52000 million. Uh, you can see home kit is blue. Controller battery is about to die. That would not be good. Uh, you got the away kit is the shitey looking black colour, but we'll, we'll live with it. The power is the King Power Stadium. Board expectations, domestic success, continental success, brand exposure and financial, all medium. And the youth development is pretty low. So, you see Leicester at the moment, uh, they're, they're, it's an interesting team choice. You know, they're kind of a four-star team, probably a bang in the middle of the league. A good season, could see you competing, maybe trying to get a top eight position. A bad season, could perhaps see you, you know, down towards the relegation so and so Leicester definitely one of those teams it's it's hard to tell which it's like a it's like a lucky bag it's like potluck random throw the dice you don't fucking know where you're going to come but I'm hoping that after a number of years we can take them back to the top spot of the Premier League and we're gonna have a quick look at some of the other teams transfer budgets in the league I uh, will go round from left, then back to Leicester. So you see Huddersfield, also a four-star team, surprisingly, 30.8 million. It's weird, man. You've got all these wee teams in the Premiership, and they've all got so much money thanks to the TV deals and the, you know, the exposure that they're getting. So a team like Huddersfield, four stars, a transfer budget of 30 million. Like, you'd never thought that was possible, but now it is. So it just goes to show you, I mean, the only thing separating us and Huddersfield is... 18 million and if you spend that on a dud you know what I mean if you buy a shite player that 18 million is just gone you know what I mean it's terminated so you know it is what it is uh, Fulham 39.9 million and they're four stars so I mean you could argue Fulham better team than us I'm saying middle of the table I'm looking at these expectations and transfer budgets and star ratings and we might actually be struggling to stay up based on how good the um, the, the smaller teams around us are uh, you got Everton, four and a half stars, 56.8 million. I do expect them to be minimum eighth place. I think they're in West Ham. The amount of money they've spent this season, they have to push on and try and get, you know, a top eight. If not, try and break into the top six. You've got Crystal Palace, a four-star team, 42.4 million. Another team that we're going to be competing against, but they're going to be tough to beat. Uh, Chelsea, five-star. You expect them to be competing for the title. No other two ways about it, man. Chelsea are not going to be, you know... Within our sights, you've got Cardiff City, a team that I would expect us to finish above. I think Cardiff will go down, three and a half star team. Still, decent amount of money, 28.6 million to spend. And they will need to spend it wisely if they want to stay in the top 
flight. There you go, Burnley up next, four-star team, finished seventh last season, did absolutely tremendous. I think they'll struggle to repeat that this season. They've got 39.6 million to spend, could be close, but I think Burnley could be the, the surprise team to go down. Uh, you know, Brighton, four stars, 28 million, it will be one of the you know favourites to go down, but again, so, even the small team, so much money, man. I mean, 28 million, that can fucking buy you a really good player. I mean, that can buy you I mean, a, a game-changer. So, a lot of money these teams have. Bournemouth, again, four stars, 41.6, more money than us. Arsenal, five, four and a half stars, 110 million. Um, we're going to be nowhere near competing with Arsenal. We've got Wolves, four stars, 56.8 million. There's so many teams here that are actually above us that I wasn't anticipating. Uh, you've got West Ham, four and a half stars, 54.8 million to spend. They've spent so much money, we've got a really good team. They have to be up there trying to get break into the top six. You've got Watford, four stars, 42 million. Spurs, five stars, 79.6 million. Uh, Southampton, four stars, 39.5 million. I actually think Southampton could be going down, not just in FIFA, but in real life, I think. You know, they're getting to the stage now where they seem to be digressing uh, every single season. They seem to be getting slightly worse, so I do think that, you know, sooner or later, uh, they're just going to go down. they got Newcastle, four stars, 30.6 million, will be one of the favourites for relegation. Man United, look at that, five star Man United, 166 million, holy shit. I mean, you could buy... You could buy the entire Scottish Premiership with that. You could buy Scotland for that, man. You could buy William Wallace. You could buy his remains. Couldn't you buy Donald Trump? Like, he's probably the best thing coming to Scotland, but you could pretty much buy everything else. Uh, you got Man City, 168 million. Five stars. <laughs> uh, Liverpool, 94 million, five stars. And then back to us. So you can see, guys, I mean... Initially, I thought mid mid table, but it looks like even I think if we this first season, I think if we could survive relegation and then build on that for next season, I think that has to be our aim, and I think that's a realistic objective. So, yeah, if we can avoid relegation. I'll be happy enough with that. It's gonna be ultimate. I always play every game I play on the hardest difficulty. It's like a disease, man. I need to do it. It's a sickness. I feel like an absolute pussy if I play it on anything else. So we're gonna be on ultimate. Half length, six minutes, currency, sterling, obviously King Power Stadium. Uh, you have the benefit of having official stadiums in the uh, Premier League. Transfer window will be on and European competitions. We will enable that, but I might mess about with some of the groups. Into the actual career mode itself, we're going to have a quick look at the expectations for the season. And then we'll have a look at the squad. Decide who our best players are. Decide who perhaps need to leave the club. And then the most important... And the most exciting part of career mode, probably, let's see what players we can bring into the club. And I think we might actually have to bring a few players in to survive relegation. Cause I was looking at those other teams around us, man, and it does scare me, the fact that they're so good. I just was not expecting them to be as strong. And you can see our objectives here. So first objective, qualify for the Europa League, and that is going to be difficult. I believe that would have to be a top seven finish. And that's crazy that they want us to compete with the likes of West Ham and Everton who have spent so much more money than us. That's going to be difficult. We'll probably, I'll be, I'll be honest, man. Unless we make some really good signings and unless I'm really good at this game, that's going to be extremely difficult to achieve. Emirates Cup reach around a 16 Premier League finish in Europa League spot. We know that development. Uh, they want us to bring youth players. I mean, we can do that, but again, it's the priority is pretty low, so I don't think we really need to. Um, don't get me wrong, we'll try and get a good youth coach and if we, uh, good youth players come along then yes, we'll sign them up, why wouldn't we? You'd be fucking stupid not to but um, you know, <laughs> I don't know, we'll wait and see brand exposure, sign one crucial first team player assigned to a forward position, now I think we might have to do that, uh, we've obviously got Jamie Fardy but he might need support he might need another good striker up with him, or at least you know, an alternative to Jamie Fardy, so I think we're going to go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, continental success, obviously qualifies for your domestic success, qualifies for Europe League and round of 16. And uh, finished season with 17.6 unspent allocated transfer funds. Okay, we should be able to do that. Let's go and have a look at the team. And uh, yeah, let's see if we're in a good position here to challenge. Maybe we'll have a look at the squad and then I'll decide. <laughs> I think our season's going to go. So goalkeepers, we've got Smigel, Iverson, 
Ward and Jakapovic or whatever the fuck he's called. But Smeichel, 84. Going to be a crucial player for us. Very solid rating. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll need to keep him at the club. Could be fatal to our, you know, Premier League uh, campaign. You've got Priera at right back along with Darnell Johnson and Danny Simpson. So it uh, looks like Priera's going to be the main man. Um, Danny Simpson should be a decent cover at right back. And then you've got Darnell Johnson, who's only 19, could turn into a good player in the future. Centre back's got Wes Morgan. Uh, a bit of a club legend there after winning the Premier League title. He's probably not good enough to start games now. I mean, he might still start with Maguire, but we might have to look to get in a better player because at 34 years of age, uh, that overall is only going to go down. So the next up, we've got Harry Maguire, 25 years old, 82, current England international, slab dome, slab heed, whatever you want to call him. Hopefully he can slam some goals into the back of the net this season. We need him... He's going to be a crucial player for us, not just in defence, but also going forward. You know, he's so physical in the air. So anytime we get, you know, free kicks, corners, he could be the target man. And he could be, you know, the difference between us having a really good season or a really shit season. Up next, got Ben Aloon, uh, 31 years old, Tunisian, 74 overall. Uh, Sam Hughes, 21 years old, uh, 65 overall. Johnny Evans, I wasn't actually aware that Leicester signed him. That's totally news to me. So it looks like Johnny Evans will fit in and partner. Uh, it's going to be between Johnny Evans and Wes Morgan to partner Harry Maguire. But we'll have a look. We'll, we'll see who seems to be the better option. You've got Felipe Benk Benkovic, also a centre-back. He could do the job. You've got this guy who I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. Uh, let's see, a decent cover for centre back actually. Left backs we've got Chilwell, Elder, and Christian Fuchs. Again, all decent. No real standout player there, but between Chilwell and Fuchs, we seem to have decent cover at left back. We've got Chowdhury, 69 overall, 20 years of age. Looks like he could be a good player in the future. Like Mendy, Amarte, Nadid, Ibora. Ibora, very good player, solid. Uh, this Wilfred Nadide. 80 overall, only 21. He could turn into a wonder kid, man. He could be canny. You never know. Not canny, canty. He could be the next canty. He fucking well could be. Already 80 overall at the age of 21. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Uh, right mid, we've got Algerian Gesell. Um, Diabate. George Thomas. Uh, centre mid, we've got on uh, Adrian Silva. Andy King. Matty James. Bartoso Kaputska. Demary Gray, Mark Albrighton, Harvey Baines, uh, Cam, we've got James Madison, 21 years old. I think he's going to be a good player in the future. It's important that we play him as much as possible, get him game time. And up front we've got Okisaki, Ineacho, who, I mean, this guy, he was, you know, tipped this the next big thing. He came around the same time as, you know, Rashford. There's a lot of talk about him going to be a you know, great player in the future. It's not really happened for him. Who knows, maybe we can re-spark his career here at Leicester. But as of, as things stand right now, he's not really hit the heights people were expecting him to. Uh, Jamie Fardy, and then you've obviously got Slimani, who is on loan at uh, Fenerbahce. So, yeah, I mean, when you take Jamie Fardy out of the equation, we do drop down to 76 and 75 rated striker, which is, um, I mean, it's not ideal, but any actual is going to improve, obviously. He is only... 21 so I don't think we're that in that bad a position guys I mean it's not like we need to go and panic by but uh, we'll definitely have a look in the transfer market we'd be stupid not to look let's be honest we'd be stupid not to and uh, we'll see who we can get as we head into episode 2 but that's going to do it guys there you go expectations for this season try and qualify for Europa League it's going to be difficult but that's what the board want we're going to have to try and do it uh, hopefully we can bring a few players in for the um, first game of the season, which is going to be against Manchester United. Holy shit. So, yes, it has got the real fixtures. Uh, Leicester started their campaign at Old Trafford, and that's what we're going to do. It doesn't get much more difficult than that. That will be our game in the next episode. Fucking hell, man. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. But hopefully, guys, we can get a positive result. Anyway, until then, until the trip to Old Trafford, man, we'll be shiting it, but uh, we've got to believe, keep on believing. <laughs> and until then, peace.